My name is Richard T. Scott. Uh, I'm a painter and a writer. I'm originally from Georgia, um, but spent a lot of time in New York uh, studying. And now I live in Paris, France. I've been painting for as long as I can remember. Um, I think the first painting I, I really recall clearly was when I was six years old. Um, ever since then, it was, it was just something that uh, I constantly did. We're not just transmuting substances into something beautiful and complex. We're not just taking dirt and oil and creating something from, from scratch. We're not just transforming the materials, we're also transforming ourselves. Uh, through painting I find that I learn a tremendous amount about uh, myself, about the world around me, how I interact with it. And uh, so <clears throat> painting for me is, is it's a way of, of really understanding uh, the universe. I believe Socrates said that, imagine there's a cave, and in this cave, uh, there are three men who are chained to a wall. They cannot move, they cannot turn their heads, they cannot move their bodies. They don't really know that their bodies actually exist. Uh, as far as they can't see them, they can only feel them, I, perhaps. But the point is, their entire lives, uh, all that they've seen before them were silhouettes, were shadows cast on the the cave wall in front of them uh, by a, a torch that was behind them. And so whoever it was who had chained them to this wall had people walk by, you know, carrying pitchers of water, carrying fruit on their heads, uh, going about daily business as if they were in a town or something and talking and interacting. And these men, these prisoners, all they knew of life were these two-dimensional shadows cast on the wall, these two-dimensional figures. And so uh, Socrates said that if you were to take one of these people and suddenly release him so that he encountered the three-dimensional world, he would be first absolutely shocked. He would be in absolute disbelief. He wouldn't understand what he was seeing. He wouldn't believe what he was seeing. Then he would be incredibly angry for being forced into this thing that he didn't understand. He would be afraid. He would be angry. Eventually, he would come to terms with it, and he would understand something fundamental that the other two did not understand. And if you put him back into that, you know, into that cave, and you locked him back up with these two other men, and he tried to explain to them what he understood, what he saw, they would, they would call him a liar, they would call him insane, they, they simply wouldn't understand. And so Socrates was saying that this is what philosophy is. This is the, the greater level of understanding. This is the third dimension. And so <clears throat> this, this started my thought process of, of wondering, uh, applying that to my own situation, applying that to the situation of mankind. Uh, how do we know that, that we are not uh, metaphorically chained to in a cave? How do we know that the three dimensions we see and know are, are not just, are not merely the shadow cast on the wall by a flickering candle? What inspired me to paint the sophist uh, was, was the question of man's existence in and how he relates to the world around him. Anyone who's ever been drunk before or <laughs> done any kind of drugs before or been very sick, had a fever before, knows that your senses can lie to you, your senses can, can delude you. The, the figure seems to be both acting upon the world around him. His hand is glowing and there's, a, there's some sort of rocket coming up from his hand and he's breathing out into the atmosphere. <clears throat> But at the same time, uh, behind him, there's a looming tempest. There's a storm that comes up. And whether he chooses to or not, he will be rained upon. And perhaps lightning will strike. And he may very well be in danger. And uh, there's nothing he can do to change that. It happens or it doesn't happen. 
So, so you could ask yourself, if the world is really a projection of my imagination, why am I so mean to myself? You know? <laughs> Bonjour, Yann. Bonjour, monsieur. Ça va? Qui êtes-vous? When I, when I came to Paris, uh, one of the first things I was really surprised about was that there were, I couldn't find any other classical painters uh, at all. I searched for two years, and uh, after two years I was able to find some, uh, well, just two people. One of them was named Jérôme Delapine, who's a wonderful painter. Uh, really has a, an incredible aesthetic vision. And uh, I was really happy when uh, I was contacted over Facebook by uh, the gallery I'm working with now, uh, Louis Duprance. Um, the name of the, I mean, the owner of the gallery is Jan Deschuliers. So what we try to do and to build in Galerie Louis Duprance is to show uh, people who know uh, how to draw. Richard Tiscott is a very good example of what we love to show here as a gallery. Uh, because we think that uh, it's uh, much powerful uh, to show uh, and to tell stories uh, with uh, figurative art. Um, because in uh, abstract art, it's, uh, of course, you are free to see what you want, but uh, I think it's, uh, in a way, much too easy. And, uh, you know, no, not so many people can do this kind of work. I began, uh, really, I began my, I guess, academic education at the New York Academy of Art. Um, and I, I was spending a lot of time at the Met copying Rembrandt. I was copying Rembrandt out at the, you know, in person at the Metropolitan Museum of Art. I was copying him out of books over and over again. And my studio uh, at the Academy was full of Rembrandt copies. And so um, one of my professors, uh, Ted Schmidt, came in the studio one day and he, he, he had uh, seen how much I was uh, obsessed with Rembrandt and he said you know I, I have something I think that you'll you'll be interested in and so he brought in this huge tome uh, of Odd Nerdrum's work <laughs> and I remember the sound of the thud as he put it down on the table <laughs> and I, I, I walked over and started flipping through it I was completely amazed I said how is it that, that I did not know that he existed how is it that I could have missed this and then I looked at him, I looked at Ted, and I said, when did he live? <laughs> and Ted just smiled at me and said, well, he's still alive. You could go study with him. I was completely floored. Uh, it was as if, as if uh, I found out at that moment that I could go study with Rembrandt. So uh, I lived, in, lived with Odd and his family for two and a half years or so. And it's been an incredible experience.